We are going to build this awesome background with a hexagonal pattern and lucky for us the HTML is quite simple. All you need is an h1 tag with the text hexagons and a div tag with the id pattern and lastly a div tag with the id gradient. Now let's grab our CSS and set up our playground. For all elements clear the margin padding and set the box sizing to border box so that the elements are a bit easier to work with. Jump over to the body and set a width and height to take up the entire space. Add a nice dark background as you might know I like to use 13 12 17 which sets a nice dark tone. We continue with a position relative so that we can use position absolute relative to the body in our elements. Use display grid together with a place content center to center the text that we will add later. We can also add the font family we will use here. The background effect consists of four layers. In the bottom we have the body which sets the color that you see between the hexagonal blocks. On top of the body we are going to have a gradient that follows the position of our mouse. We we will use the div tag with the id gradient to create this layer. For the third layer we will use a div tag with the id pattern and create a pattern with a bunch of hexagonal images. The fourth and last layer is simply the text. Let's start with the gradient. The gradient consists of two parts. First we need to create it with the CSS and then we move it around with JavaScript. Let's start with the CSS. Add a radial gradient background with your color of choice and let it transform into a transparent color at the edges. For the size I've chosen 400 pixels but you can of course tweak this. We add an absolute position to make the middle of the gradient sit on top of the top left corner of the div. This is so that when we move the div using the transform property it will sit at the middle of the cursor. Now to the JavaScript part. First we create a variable where we save the x and y position of the mouse. We update them using an event listener on the document. To make the div with the gradient move smoothly, I like to create a small render function, which we can call loop. We trigger it using the window.requestAnimationFrame function, and then repeatedly call it in the end of the loop function. Update the transform property of our gradient div using the translate function, and we should be all set. Drop a comment down below and let me know what colors you'll be using for this gradient. To create the pattern of the hexagons we will use the div with the id pattern. Make it stretch from left to right and top to bottom but let it go a little bit outside on the left and top side so that it will look like we have an endless pattern of hexagons. Before we hop into the JavaScript, add a set index of 1 so that it lies on top of the gradient we just created. Let's dig into the JavaScript. We will use position absolute to place the hexagons in the pattern div from left to right and top to bottom. The tricky part is that each row shouldn't fall entirely below the last row. But in our case it will fall 40 pixels and then we shift it a bit to the right. Which in our case is 24 pixels. We do this until we have filled the screen both in the X and in the Y axis. We can pretty easily calculate the amount of hexagons we need by dividing the height of the pattern element with the size of a row for the amount of rows. And the amount of columns can be calculated by dividing the width of the pattern element with the width of a hexagon. Add one extra hexagon to both counts just to make sure we don't get a number where there's one hexagon missing. Create two for loops, one for each row and one for each hexagon in that row. Create a div, take an image of a hexagon and place it as a background on the div. We give the div a width, a height and tell the image to resize into the div using the background size contain. Next we place the tile in our pattern div using a position absolute and set the top and left to where it should exist. Don't forget to append the div into the pattern element to sum it all up. We could have used the HTML encoded character for a hexagon, but by using a background image we can use different hexagon images to create some nice patterns. To top it all off, we style the h1 tag with a bigger font size, a thick font weight, a white color and a position relative so we can give it a z index and place it on top of the backgrounds. Also align the text to the center. This looks so awesome and you my friend, you are also awesome.